Hello, I'm Frank Duene, astronaut of the European Space Agency and commander of Expedition 21 on board of the International Space Station. Here on the International Space Station, we live in a world without gravity. I can demonstrate this by, for example, floating myself and having my feet off the ground. Or I can fix myself a little bit and have the capillarity experiment, which I will perform for you, floating freely and it doesn't fall to the ground. Welcome to the Take My Classroom Into Space experiment and more particularly the capillarity experiment. What is capillarity? Well, capillarity is something that we can observe in our daily life. For example, when we take a piece of paper in the kitchen or a cloth in the, in the kitchen to uh, mop up some water, the water will rise into the paper. The same thing we can see on the walls of houses, for example, when it's very wet, the water will rise up the walls on the water. Or capillarity is also used in nature by trees. It's how they get all the water from the ground to their leaves to feed them with uh, all the drinking water. What is capillarity? How, how does it express itself? Well, basically, it is when the forces between the molecules of the liquid are less big or lesser than the forces between a liquid and a solid substance. This can be, for example, the forces between water and the paper, then the forces within the water itself, water molecules themselves. We can demonstrate this very easy by, for example, taking some colored water that we have here in this tube and injecting it. And here we have some glass plates. And the glass plates are very close together, but they are a little bit closer together here in the beginning than they are at the end. What makes that, if you do this experiment on the ground, the water will rise here because of the adhesive forces between the glass and the water very high in the beginning where they are very close together and much less at the end where the glass is much more apart. And so we will get a curve like this. And you can experiment this on the ground as well and you can see this. How will it react in space in microgravity? Well, to be honest, I don't know. So let's try to do that. I will inject very slowly water into this, between those two glass plates here. We have to make a special device in space because of course in space we have to be careful with liquids and we, the system needed to be contained. The water is just blue water that we have colored. So I'm now very slowly pushing on this monovet to get some water into the system. I don't want to push too hard because if I push hard I will put, put pressure on the water and the pressure on the water will make it rise because of pressure not because of capillarity. I'm very slowly pushing the water and you see something unusual here happens. because the water starts rising in the middle and not from the side. Now that we are injecting more water, you see however that the water is rising more there where the glasses are closer together than where they are far apart. So also in microgravity capillarity plays a role because the liquid is drawn up into there where the surfaces are closer. What is different than on Earth is that the water does not go completely to the bottom because of course on Earth you have also gravity and because of gravity the water will also fall down or cycle down and here of course you don't have gravity so this does not happen but we still see that where there is the surfaces are closer together 
the water is more going to that side. Here, for example, we see very clearly the effect of capillarity where the water is really creeping towards the side and creeping up. Ever so slowly, but you see that the water is creeping up. I will leave it stabilized here for a while and see what it does. I will inject a little bit more water. And you see the water ever so slowly here rising, even though that now I'm not pushing in new water anymore. And this is just by the capillarity effect. You see that the water here is stable and not progressing anymore. And here it's rising because the surfaces are close together and capillarity is present. I'll just have a little bit more water pushed in. There we go. And so although we don't get this very nice form that you have on the ground where you have this nice curve, we still see that capillarity is very well present in space and that it works very well. Actually, we use this in space as well. For example, in our urine processor that we have here to make fresh water from our urine or from wastewater, uh, we also use the capillarity effect. But also for some operational tasks, for example, from time to time, we need to control the health of the astronauts. And in order not always to have to do blood draws, we make a small finger prick here in our finger and then we use very tiny tubes to just push a little bit of blood out of the, the tips of our finger and the blood is sucked into the tubes because of the capillarity effect. And then we can do some tests on those very small blood samples. So also operationally, capillarity is used a lot in gravity, in microgravity, here inside of the International Space Station. So let me give one more push for the liquid and see if it indeed continues in the same way. Okay, now I injected some more water, so the pressure probably went, pushed it up that way. But we see that still when the water is there, there it stays stable after the push, because I don't apply pressure anymore. But here, ever so slowly, it keeps rising because of the capillarity effect. That was it. I'm happy that you could join this Take Your Classroom Into Space lesson about capillarity in microgravity. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you can build one of these things a little bit easier in your classroom. Try it with just some water and some paint and you will see very interesting results. Discuss this with your teacher and you might have a lot of fun as well. Science is also fun. All the best. Thank you very much. Bye.